I get to pick any dinner I want, and I picked loaded baked potato lasagna, which is something I made up when I was definitely paying attention in science. Uh, are you sure you don't want something else? It's my day. It's his day, Dad. Yep, it's just, just, I'm not sure lasagna should include a loaded baked potato. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the loaded baked potato lasagna from Bob's Burgers. There comes a point in every person's life when they're either a child or stoned, and they wonder, how do I get loaded baked potato flavors into a lasagna format? Luckily, Gene Belcher is here to not only ask those questions aloud, but to put them into action. So my first crack is going to be crafted from ready-made store-bought ingredients, like these frozen hash brown patties that I'm going to use as lasagna noodles. I'm just going to bake these up nice and crisp on a wire rack in a convection oven. Same deal with two pounds of thick-cut bacon, which I also used to roast on wire racks, but discovered that it really doesn't make much of a difference. So just bake them on some aluminum foil in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven until they're nice and crisp. Drain on paper towels and be sure to save all that delicious bacon fat. I have excited and disgusting ideas for how to use it. Go ahead and pat that dry, and then there appeared to be a layer of green in Jean's lasagna, a good candidate for which I think is broccoli, which I'm chopping into florets and steaming for about eight minutes. Then immediately it's headed into a bowl of ice water. This is both going to halt its cooking and preserve its verdant green color. Allow that to cool completely about one minute, drain and pat thoroughly dry. No matter what kind of freaky lasagna you're making, you don't want it to be wet. Chop it up fine and we're ready to assemble. In lieu of meat sauce, I'm just gonna use some canned chili. First laying down an anti-stickage layer and arranging my darkest, crispiest hash browns over top. Another smear of chili, a sprinkling of chopped broccoli, a generous smattering of crumbled bacon, and an even more generous smattering of yellow cheddar cheese. Rinse and repeat until your lasagna pan is filled to the brim. And because all of our fillings are so much thicker than typical lasagna trappings, I was only able to get two layers in there, but I think it still qualifies. Cover with foil and bake for 30 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Uncover and bake for an additional 10 minutes to brown things up. Let it rest for 15 minutes, slice and serve, with, of course, some sour cream and sliced scallions. And there you have it, quick and easy baked potato lasagna, something that I'm sure is already a casserole or potluck dish of some kind in the Midwest, and one that's surprisingly tasty, like a leftovers lasagna made from Super Bowl party snacks. But as far as guilty pleasures go, it's much more guilty than pleasure. If we're going to eat a baked potato lasagna, we might as well make one that's worth the cholesterol. So first up, the potato element. Potatoes and pasta most famously come together in the form of gnocchi, so I'm going to try to make a gnocchi dough that can be rolled out into lasagna noodles. I've got six potatoes that I'm poking with a fork and roasting at 375 for about an hour, covering with a towel and letting cool for about 10 minutes, just long enough so that they still hurt when you peel them by hand without causing any permanent damage. Peel off the skins, and while the potato flesh is still nice and hot, we're going to rice them using a potato ricer, obliterating any chunks or hard spots into a smooth, fluffy mass. Spread this out evenly on a rim baking sheet and allow them to cool completely. This is going to let some more excess moisture evaporate. Spread them out onto a work surface and sprinkle them with 75% of their weight in all-purpose flour. So I got 800 grams of potato here, that means 600 grams of flour. Then I'm drizzling them with one egg beaten together with one egg yolk, and beginning to fold things together using a bench scraper. Eventually a dough is going to form, which we're going to need for a very, very long time. We need to develop as much gluten as possible in a not very glutinous dough, adding flour generously if it's too sticky. After about 15 minutes of kneading and adding flour, my arms gave out, so I decided to wrap it in plastic wrap and let it rest, electing instead to work more gluten and flour into the dough by laminating it. That is, rolling it out, sprinkling it with flour, folding it up, and rolling it out again, repeatedly until the dough is strong enough so that it can be rolled out into thin lasagna noodles. And I'll tell you right now, this was totally not worth all the extra effort. If you want to try this for yourself, I would use your favorite fresh pasta dough recipe, swapping a third of your flour for potato flour. Either way, our gnocchi noodles are ready to layer. Now to put that delicious bacon fat to good use. I got a third of a cup here that I'm heating over medium heat until shimmering, adding a third of a cup of flour, whisking and cooking for about one minute, and then I'm slowly streaming in a mixture of two cups each whole milk and buttermilk. That's right, we're making buttermilk bacon fat bechamel. I'm using buttermilk because I want to bring a sour cream-like tang without using sour cream, which tends to split in the oven. Season with a pinch of salt and freshly ground black pepper. Whisk frequently and cook for three to five minutes over medium heat. I'm also going to add a couple bay leaves in there and cook until nice and thick. Strain out the solids and let it cool. Next up, I'm sticking with chili instead of sauce, but of course we're making our own. Browning one pound of ground beef in batches to make sure that it gets some good color. Draining on paper towels and then in all the delicious beef fat, sauteing half a diced yellow onion for three to five minutes until it's picked up some lovely color, then emphatically adding two ounces of tomato paste and crushing in four cloves of garlic, letting those saute for about 30 seconds, then adding two teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of chipotle chili powder, and one tablespoon of sweet paprika. Toast those for about 30 seconds and then add two cups of beef broth. Scrape up all that good stuff off the bottom of the pot, add one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, one tablespoon of ground mustard, one tablespoon Worcestershire sauce, and our 
brown ground round. Bring this up to a simmer, lower the heat, and cook gently for 35 to 45 minutes until nice and thick and the flavors have melded. And just because I'm worried about underrepresenting bacon in the lasagna, I'm gonna add about a pound of our chopped cooked bacon. Now it's time to assemble. Same order as before. Chili followed by our sheets of pasta instead of hash browns. Another layer of chili followed by our bacon fat buttermilk bechamel. And then I'm going to cover that with shredded white cheddar cheese. I want this to resemble a traditional lasagna. And as always, repeat until the lasagna pan is full. I do not want to see the rim of my pan this time, so I am packing this thing straight to the rafters. Then I'm going to loosely tent it with foil, making sure that the foil doesn't touch the cheese. Then I'm baking it in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for an hour and 15 minutes before removing the foil, then baking for an additional 15 until beautiful. Then I'm going to run a preventative spatula around the outside to prevent stickage, and ideally let this thing rest for at least 30 minutes, but I couldn't quite wait. And so it cut ugly, but it tasted incredible. Creamy, cheesy, meaty, and slightly potatoey. Everything great about a loaded baked potato in lasagna form. So it deserved a prettier presentation. I waited for it to cool completely before cutting a nice clean slice, nuking in the microwave for a few minutes until heated through, and then crisping up in the oven. This is why I usually make lasagna the day before, because it's better and prettier as leftovers. So there you have it, Gene Belcher's dream fully realized, maybe with some chopped scallions on there for good measure. In spite of it sounding objectively gross on paper, the crew and I polished this whole thing off within a day. It it is genuinely one of the tastier objects on this planet. As a former B minus, more like C plus student myself, it's a delicious reminder that grades cannot quantify a person's value or creativity. I'm getting on a soapbox here, but hopefully we can all be a little bit more like Gene, unreservedly exploring our passions without fear of judgment. Because sometimes it can yield delicious results.